back. It is day four of our week of love, but let's face it, love can be messy, it can be complicated, it sometimes can put you to the test. Our next guests, Josh and Katie Walters, are helping couples survive that test with their new book. It's called New Marriage, Same Couple. Don't let your worst days be your last days. And woof, let me tell you. <laughs> Some consider it a very hot take on infidelity. As college sweethearts, Josh and Katie seem to have the perfect storybook love story. But then things they say fell apart. While Katie was pregnant with their third child, she started to have an emotional affair with another man. Many people would say, game over. They say, not so fast. There's more to this story, and Josh and Katie are here to talk about how they found their way from that lowest point and what they say you can learn from it. Tam fam, please welcome Josh and Katie Walters to our show. <laughs> yes, Thank you so much for joining us. It takes a lot to share your journey and relive this because this was years gone by now, mm -hmm. yeah. but you are talking about it with the goal of helping other people. I couldn't help but notice as I was reading what happened, you leaned in and rubbed Josh's back <laughs> and tapped his hand because it does bring up old feelings. That's right. Mm -hmm. When you heard me playing it out, it's particularly the emotional affair part of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did that feel for you? Yeah, you know, it was 16 years ago, but still the pain is is real. You know, it was mm -hmm. such a devastating time in our marriage, something we never thought would happen to us. Yeah. We say no marriage is bulletproof, but we really thought if anyone's going to rock marriage, you know, it's going to yeah. be us. Yeah. And so to find ourselves in that low point, kind of standing on this pile of rubble was such a devastating time. Well, it's interesting, Josh, because you were six years into your marriage. Um, Katie, you were pregnant with your third child. When I said infidelity, I bet you 90% of the audience thought it was you. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was actually Katie mm -hmm. who, no. while pregnant, started to have feelings for someone else. You learned, how did you learn about it? So she came mm -hmm. over our house one night. They were our neighbors, our best friends. They were in your friend's circle. That's yeah. right. The woman you know. from the other couple yeah. came over to our house. Yeah, and she felt like something was off in their relationship. Maybe her husband was having an affair. And I, being very relationally aware, said, I assure you, there's nothing going on. I know him mm -hmm. so well. That would never happen. you know. And so it was just one of those things that I was totally blind to. And that was probably the most difficult part of it was that uh, I thought all the tension we felt was more just adulting. We were uh, starting in ministry. I was a pastor. Yeah. She had just started as a school guidance counselor. Mm -hmm. We had acquired a few rental properties. We're having kids. We had effectively like burn up any margin in our lives. And mm -hmm. so I thought the tension we were feeling. Because you were living a big life. Yeah, you just how to manage All it. of these things. Mm -hmm. um, Katie, emotional affair. I mean, I think when people really started to talk about it, to be honest, it was a celebrity couple Brad and Angelina Jolie, years ago, I was in local morning TV and we all started doing this emotional affair storyline. Right. Um, how, what is, how do you define this emotional affair that you were having? Well, I know now really this probably started about a year prior to the moment that I confessed it to Josh, me just thinking on another man, you know, letting my heart go to places like, I bet this is better in their life. You know, I, th I just think I desire things that they have, but then I really started to dress for him, you mm -hmm. know, to, to long for his attention. That's where the emotional, you know, it's trying to take you somewhere. It, it doesn't want us just, these thought lives are not just meant to lead us nowhere. Right. They're so it meant wasn't just like, death. oh gosh, life could be greener. What is it? The grass is greener on the other side. It was mm -hmm. more than that. It was life with this person. This person, that's right. And then the moment that we had our third son and he was in the NICU, and it was a, a tension season in our life. You know, he was very sick, he's in the NICU, but it was in that moment that we, me and the other man kind of confessed our feelings for each other. And that was May 29th. And, and you told each other you loved, loved you, each you other. thought you loved this other person. Yes, and then I spent the whole summer, I say now it was like the summer of hell, but this whole summer just making plans, should I leave my family, you know, for this other man really mm. just, acting on what the emotions had led me to do. So I didn't confess to Josh until August 8th. And even that night of the confession, the woman leaves our house and I finally felt like the blinders fell and I could see the pain I was causing another person. And, and this husband. was not physical. There was no 
<clears throat> no, at this point, we were definitely, we always say it was just an affair because I just had a baby, but we're meeting each other. I mean, it was as bad as you can wow. imagine because, I mean, I really thought I loved him, wow. you know? And so when she left our house, I, and I told Josh that night, what if it's me? What if I'm the problem? It was shocking to him, you know? Mm -hmm. And I could see in his face just the wheel spinning of, oh, wow. okay, that's what's been happening. Coming up, the emotional affairs reveal the low point is real. How did Josh and Katie's marriage survive it? And what they say other people who experience something like this can do to save their own relationships. That's next. Welcome back. It's our week of love. And we are talking about sometimes the roadblocks and complicated things that can happen in love. We're with Josh and Katie Walters. They are the authors of a book. It's called New Marriage, Same Couple, where they open up about surviving infidelity and offer solutions for couples working on their relationships. Um, you were saying we had Kingsley Benadir on, and you said mm -hmm. you feel like this is a redemption song for you in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Because you got to the point, Josh, um, that you said, I got to look past embarrassment. She's been honest, and we have to move forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that required a whole reset. It did. Yeah, we had to, in a lot of ways, not just get to a new place in our marriage. We had to go to a new place physically. Like we you moved. moved. We moved to Charleston, mm -hmm. really, as kind of a Hail Mary, God, mm -hmm. save our That's marriage. That's what everyone, everyone's like, yep, yeah. move me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said, right. we got to get yeah. out of this environment and wholesale move. In the book, you do have um, points that you walk people through. Mm -hmm. You call it the stay, and each letter represents something. At the S stands for start with you. What do you mean by that? We really mean that for each person, when one person changes, the entire relationship changes. So there's yeah. a lot of principles about confession therapy and being honest okay. and bringing your whole selves to each yeah. other. You also say take quitting off the table, which is obvious. You say Al allow others to be part of your journey um, and then yield to vision. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Oftentimes, couples just stop dreaming. Yeah. They, uh, mm -hmm. they initially in the relationship, all you're talking about is where we're going to go, who we're going to be, what we're going to do, and then Mike Tyson's everybody's got a plan until you get punched, punched in the, in the face. face. <laughs> right? That's right. And so you end up kind of responding and reacting to life yeah. instead of going after a vision for who are we called to be, what does God want us to do? Yeah. So yield to vision yeah. is about wherever you are in your marriage, starting to dream again. And you dreamt so much that at the time you were expecting your third, you now have seven children. That's right. Come on. <laughs> and the marriage is still intact. Yeah. And you have a book out now. <laughs> and you kept going. The kids range in age from 20 to three. To 20 to three. Yeah. 